metal wings to fly won't take you to the stars. Use the metal for a boat and you won't sail too far. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal pots about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret pink code, pink code, Signs can be tricky, it can overheat your brain. Signs can be hard to chew, each bite can be a pain. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal pots about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret pink code. go. It's nice spending time on something sort of special that'll be a nice surprise for your friends. What a massive asteroid! Yeah, yeah! And it's about to collide with a nearby planet. But don't worry, fortunately that planet is not Earth. Holy carrots! Oh, that's gonna be crazy great! We'll totally uh -huh. see it burning and exploding mm -hmm. and stuff, right? I imagine, yes. It will be an unforgettable event. <laughs> but in advance of the collision, we're going to conduct a one-of-a-kind experiment. We aren't able to study this sort of phenomenon every day, right? We just need this great big asteroid's help. But isn't that dangerous? <laughs> Not at all, my dear worrywart friend. There's still plenty of time. Surprise! Um, um, fine. Now that we're so fashionable, let's thank our dear friend here for the lovely gifts and turn our attention back to the asteroid. But prior to undertaking our exciting experiment, I'd like to ask, how much do you know about electrical currents? Electrical currents? are a kind of energy that powers all of our stuff. Light bulbs, mixers, toasters, microwaves, vacuums, fridges, computers, our own ship all work because of electricity. Electrons moving along conducting wires are what make an electrical current. If the electrons could move through empty space, we would have perpetual energy with no loss. Hooray for endless power! But no, electrons can't flow in a vacuum, but among metal atoms it flows quite nicely. And when those electrons collide with the metal atoms, they end up giving those atoms part of the energy that they're carrying. Which means, unfortunately, the energy will run out over time. Isn't it considerate of the electrons to share like this? No! Oh! What does the asteroid have to do with this? Patience, my enthusiastic friend, patience. I want that to be a surprise. Pin, are we in position over the asteroid? We're right where we should be. Excellent. When we first came across this asteroid, I realized we could do something awesome. We could all have a unique, fascinating experience. But first, we need to put on our warmer spacesuits. I do not do cold. Or surprises. Well... Unless they come from Rosa. Remember, do not take off your spacesuit. There's no air, and you'll freeze solid in about 12 seconds. And also, my excitable friends, the asteroid's gravity is quite low. One careless jump and you'll fly off into space like a wee furry rocket. Oh, wow. Hey, this is really fun! This is the big surprise, right? Actually, it's not. I'm not exactly sure what's going on here. What the slop are you guys doing up there? And how come I'm the only one not floating, huh? Is this asteroid saying that I'm fat? Maybe because you're the only one not wearing one of the pendants you gave us. What did you make these things out of, Rosa? They're just paper. Oh, and I also glued little magnets to the back so you could hang them on the fridge. Oh, and also a half tablespoon of love. Now I understand. The pendants did this. Because of the love? Because of the magnets, of course. Hang on. If you wear a magnet, you can fly? Not really. This is just because magnets aren't compatible with superconductors. I don't understand that at all. 
you explain it one more time in bird brain terms? Of course. Please try to keep up. The atoms and conductors are constantly vibrating and the electrons are colliding with them and giving away energy. Because of this, the electrical current decreases. And the higher the temperature, the stronger the vibration and resistance for the electrons and their energy. Whoa. So, if the temperature decreases, the resistant force will decrease too? Yes, that's right. Exactly. Moreover, though, in 1911, a Dutch physicist, Heike Kammerling Onis, discovered that if the temperature of the conductor is lowered to minus 270 degrees, the resistance force disappears completely. And this phenomenon is now called superconductivity. And the conductors that can be cooled to do this are called superconductors. You move faster with nothing in your way? That's not exactly an earth-shattering revelation. What is all this got to do with Rosa's magnets? Quite a lot. All superconductors have a unique property in common. Superconductors and magnetic fields repel each other. That means that anything magnetized would float over a superconductor. The asteroid we landed on is a conductor with a unique composition. But because of space's ultra-low temperatures, they're very close to absolute zero, then the asteroid becomes a superconductor, and the superconductor asteroid pushes out against the magnetic field of the magnets on the back of our pendants. Sorry about that. My feelings won't be too hurt if you throw them away. That's not true. They'll be crazy hurt. So if we take these hard things off, then we'll float back down, right? Don't do that. Stop. There's no air, remember? And it's cold, too. We just float here forever? I'll pull you back inside the ship. No worries. Be careful, my friend. If you jump too high, you could end up floating forever through the vacuum of space. For the record, I didn't want to come out here in the first place. Is it me, or is it getting colder out here, guys? Yeah, that's the lack of energy. We are all going to get very cold. But don't worry, we'll run out of air long before we freeze. Gee, thanks, Pin. We all feel much better now. Look at that. Well, looks like we don't need to worry about running out of air after all. The asteroid is going to collide with the planet before we run out of air. Uh, surprise. Did I mention I don't like surprises? But I hate this one more than all the others put together. Hmm. Rosa, go and fire the ship's engines up. We can use it to change the asteroid's course and then it will not collide with the planet. But I... I don't know how to pilot the ship. You'll have to learn as you're doing it. That's how all the best pilots are trained. That's a lie, but you got this. You're looking for a big switch that says on. Or no, if you're looking at it from the wrong side. Nine, that's the Boogie Wonderland switch. Keep looking! Okay, at this point, you've literally hit all of the wrong buttons! <laughs> 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 to laugh so hard, my friends. We still have a limited air supply. I think I figured out how to turn on the heater. Should I use it to warm you up a little? 
If you stay out here much longer, you'll turn into a bunch of Rikisicles! Of course! You're a genius, Rosa! We should warm the asteroid with a heater! It'll stop superconducting if we're successful at warming up its temperature! Theoretically, the superconductivity of the asteroid will now decrease and we will return to the ground! Crash! It's kind of a bummer superconductors only work when it's super cold! I wish they worked all the time! Put a magnet in my pocket, then whammo! I could fly! That would be awesome, my always dreaming friend, wouldn't it? Hopefully that day will come. Someone will come up with a superconductor that works at normal temperatures. Whoever does will be a shoe in for the Nobel Prize, and they'll get their own reality show. And that day comes, the world at last will see the noble penguin fly. The father of superconductivity is the Dutch physicist Heike Kamerling Onis. In 1913, he was awarded the Nobel Prize for his discovery of this phenomenon. His motto was, by measurement to knowledge. In 1962, Soviet physicist Lev Landau received the Nobel Prize for the mathematical theory of superfluidity. He also happened to have a theory for life which was that everyone deserves to be happy. In 1972, three American physicists, John Bardeen, Leon Cooper, and Robert Schrieffer, received the Nobel Prize for further developing the theory of superconductivity. And in 2003, three more scientists received the Nobel Prize for significant contributions to the theory of superconductivity. Alexei Aprikosov, Vitaly Ginsburg, and Anthony Leggett. Ginsburg, whose youth was during the Second World War, joked that his love for lower temperatures springs from an especially cold winter in 1942. Recently, new superconductors have been discovered that work at the temperature of just negative 170 degrees Celsius. Perhaps someday we'll find substances with zero resistance at room temperature.